This is going to get me in trouble. Again, this sounds morbid, but it, it's it was really fun to celebrate her this way. She did have some specific wishes talked about um, being cremated and having her ashes scattered in an important place, like even mentioned a mountain there in Tucson. So we wanted to uh, honor her wishes and we, we took her ashes and it was me and the boys and my father. We'd scattered her ashes on a mountain, but we didn't scatter all of them. We said she would want to be on campus too. So we went to campus. So we were kind of having to be a little careful and cautious about spreading her ashes and, and things like that. And we would find, you know, important places to her around campus. But we're walking by the University of Arizona football stadium and she loved the sports team and the gate was open and there's nobody around. And, I, and we talked, we whispered amongst the family and, and I just said, I'm gonna do it. And I ran onto the field with her ashes in the end zone. And I spread them around really fast and a little bit of white dust goes up in the air and I go sprinting back out of the stadium. You know, we did it over by the Modern Languages building where she spent her career taking that away. We spread her ashes on campus and she would have definitely would have loved it. Knowing my mother and the circle she ran in and the things she did, I mean, she was sought out worldwide by some of the things that she did and, and was very well respected in her field. Yes, right now. My name is David Parsons. Um, I'm the son, eldest son of Nevia Parsons. I am the fire chief of the city of Oceanside Fire Department. That's uh, the highest level government position in the fire service that you can get. Um, something I'm kind of proud of and I think my mother would be proud of for sure if she were uh, alive today to know about that. Is it right too that when she was teaching there that you were in some of her classes when she taught Portuguese? I did. I took, oh gosh, it might have been just one or two classes. In fact, one of her sons was in my Portuguese class. I was a TA in the Spanish and Portuguese department, and I taught, you know, beginning like first and second semester Portuguese for three years. So I was under her supervision and guidance from 1989 to 1991. I mean, what I know is that she's from Fortaleza. My father went down to South America as part of the Peace Corps, and they were teaching basic agricultural practices to indigenous peoples of, of South America. She was a teacher, she taught Portuguese to the Peace Corps volunteers, of which my father was one of them. She told me one time I made this comment, I said, oh, Nive, you, you act like you're, you're an actress, you know? And she says, I was an actress in Brazil. I said, really? She said, yeah. So that was, that came to me as a surprise, but nonetheless, you know, it was, yeah, that's so much like you, you know? The best I can gather is that they were um, kind of a whirlwind or, or quickly enamored of each other and got married and eventually um, came back to the United States together. They got divorced. Um, I was still in elementary school. Two very good people who um, ended up either being just kind of very different in the end and not compatible, but um, very loving, good people cared about their family and uh, just wanted the best for the family. We spoke probably mostly English in the home, but Portuguese was spoken in the home as well. I think we were just young American kids and we were living the lifestyle of the Brazilian culture. I mean, she was probably one of the few professors, you know, that didn't have a PhD. Nonetheless, you know, the woman was like a ball of fire. She was great. She loved to 
have students do role plays, you know, do uh, skits. I first met Livia in 1985, and, and I believe it was like winter time because it was very cold in Brazil. And she was visiting Brazil because she was working on her Travessia video based Portuguese textbook. And she had to go to Rede Globo and do that kind of stuff, you know. I remember she spent a lot of time at it and was very proud of it. The most praise that I got from Livia was when she wrote in this letter of recommendation that I was a natural teacher. And she wrote me a beautiful letter. She had a big heart, you know. Yeah. She, was, she was out there to help people, you know. Yeah. And myself included, you know. So yeah. I, I missed her. I, I miss her still, you know, yeah. to this day. My mother is, was a very, very kind, easygoing, happy person. Um, but I heard that she was a tough, tough teacher. Like, no, no excuses and no, no mistake. She held you accountable. But then when it came to the teaching thing, she was all business. You know, outside of class, she was a clown. You know, she just loved to joke and tell like some spicy joke. You know. <laughs> Olivia was, she was what I would call like a uniter. She somehow, you know, brought the Brazilian community in Tucson and the Portuguese program together, you know. Every year there would be a carnaval, you know, dancing party and that draw hunt. I mean, one year I think we had about 500 people, you know. Every year there would be a costume contest, you know. I don't remember her really dressing up, you know. She's already a clown by nature, right? So. <laughs> she was a very passionate person about the things she cared about. She cared about Brazil. She cared about the University of Arizona and sports. But everybody loved her, right? Th those are the teachers that make the biggest difference in your life. Someone who um, you could, she was your friend if you wanted a friend. She had open office hours all the time. You could call her any time of the night. We have video of when the kids were little and she loved, she loved the grandkids. I'm gonna take it away. One, two, three, two. Those are bittersweet pictures because that was after she found out that she was terminally ill. Look, I even put my makeup on. Jesus. No makeup on. Uh, we used to get together in this bakery on Oracle by Trader Joe's and, and I remember that on the way to the car, you know, like as we were leaving, she said, oh, you know, I'm worried, I'm, I, I have this uh, sore that doesn't heal and she showed it to me, you know, and then um, not long after, you know, she was like, you know, with cancer. Yeah, from that point on, she she only lived six months, you know, and she had to move to California where her sons were living. You know, I think it was a very good idea of uh, her sons, uh, David and Ron, you know, to establish this uh, fund, you know, because, you know, she was all about uh, exchanging. She would have been moved to tears in joy and happiness about it because of the difference it was making and that she was um, sharing her her background and her heritage with others. And, um, you know, I go to her scholarship. I, I try to be there as much as I can to, to present the scholarship. 